Okay, welcome to SAT 3310. Today we're going to be talking about uh, working with web and network and using PowerShell. A uh, really good web resource that I found, um, this is just the, the Microsoft uh, website that goes over PowerShell. They really have some, some really good information. If you can copy and paste this URL, uh, this is in particular is talking about PowerShell arrays. Uh, but it's a great online reference for um, PowerShell, and I think it's going to come in very handy for, for this section of the class. Let's talk some more about uh, using arrays in PowerShell. Uh, so a PowerShell array, remember, holds a list of data items. Um, the nice thing about PowerShell arrays is that the, the data items don't even have to be the same type. You can see here are just some very simple um, methods. I'm making uh, some array. I'm, I'm giving it a list of numbers. Uh, I do another array. I'm giving it a range of numbers. And then just by using the ampersand and parentheses, or not, I'm sorry, not ampersand, the at symbol and parentheses, uh, we can make a blank array. If I want to uh, do some work on the array and then display it, uh, recall that you can just call the variable name of the array and it'll display everything in the array. If you want to display just one item uh, in the array, you just have to give it the index number. Recall also that the first item in an array starts at index number zero. For counting items in the array, uh, what you can do is just uh, use the dot count method with PowerShell. So it's as simple as saying uh, array name variable and appending dot count uh, to that, which will then return the number of items in that array. Uh, working with array, uh, uh, again, this is just um, some assignment operators with the array. Uh, using the equals sets the value uh, of that array index item to a new value. Um, the plus equals and minus equals either increments or decrements. Uh, so that's, that's true not just with arrays, of course, but with anything else. You can see uh, multiple equals will multiply by a variable, divide equals. Um, Percent is the modulus remainder, and then uh, the shortcuts plus plus and minus minus are for incrementing by one or decrementing by one. Uh, using arrays in loops, uh, uh, recall the for loop with PowerShell. The syntax is just for um, starting initial values. Uh, conditions to be met and then the repeating increment and then you have your statement list. The for each syntax is nice because you can do the for, for x in list or in this case um, use the, the, the syntax of for each item in some sort of uh, list or array or collection. Uh, do something with, again, the, the curly brackets. So you can do something uh, as simple as, say you want to cycle through the entire array and display every item in the array. Uh, you could say for each element in array name, and then what you're going to do, uh, your, your code block within the curly braces there is just call that, <laughs> that element, um, which would just display it on the screen. Hashes in PowerShell, uh, you may have, have heard them called, say, like in, in Python, they'd be called a, a dictionary. Uh, this is where you have your uh, key and value pair. So this would be, uh, again, like a dictionary in other scripting languages. It's called a hash in PowerShell. So if you're going to have um, key value pairs, uh, let's see if I have a slide here. Yeah, here we go. So you would, instead of using the at symbol and parentheses, use the at symbol and curly braces for hashes. Um, 
the example here is I'm doing key values. So I am making a new hash, I'm just calling it hash, and the key value pair I'm doing number and one, shape is a square, and the color is blue. That's key value, key value, key value. You can then go through and then call that hash and say, um, I want um, at number, and it would return the, the value of one. Or shape, if I called at shape, it would give me um, the value of square. One issue that we're going to run into with um, PowerShell and using the web is they've got some older versions of, of working on the web and some newer versions. And now, unfortunately, in a lot of the examples in the slides and examples in the lab, I'm using an older version. And I really would hope that you might be able to um, use a newer version to to get data off the, the web. So here's a good example of that. Um, the old method for downloading a file would be using the older web client method. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm setting a um, new object. Uh, I'm using the old uh, .NET system of web client. So I'm saying my new web client variable is a new object from system not web client. So it's a it's an older .NET. And then the web client download file uh, method is just giving an URL um, and then a string. So what you can do is say now web client download file, give it the URL and the file name, and then give it the string for your local path and local file name. Uh, so it's it's again it's an older method it's not you know strictly PowerShell compliant um, or at least not the new PowerShell compliant um, but it works here you see a newer PowerShell method and it's just called invoke web request uh, so in this case you just say invoke web request give it the URI of your URL and file and then say you want the output file to be saved um, just give it a local path and a local file name. So you can see there's the old version and the new version. Definitely, definitely try to use the new version when you can.